For those who don't know me, I live in an oppressive matriarch with my mother and sister pretty much running the entire operation. Excluding that initial statement, <laughs> we get on pretty well due to our mutual shared love of pop culture, entertainment, movies, TV, and what have you. But one thing me and my fam don't see eye to eye on is the misguided notion that video games are not a true art form. After having a lengthy discussion on the matter, I came away with the realization that I am the true intellectual of my family. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, if they see this, I'm so fucked. <laughs> In all seriousness, I found this topic fascinating. I couldn't fathom that there are still people out there who hold this worldview. So I went off to write this script so other people who believe video games are not true art can be disproven and discover that games are not only indeed true art, but in some instances surpass contemporary art and entertainment. In short, it's my belief that gaming is a superior art form. <laughs> So where do we begin with such a hot button topic? Well, let's start by defining what exactly is art, or what exactly I mean when I say art. To start, let's look at the textbook definition of what art is. Art is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically a visual form such as a painting or a sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for beauty and emotional power. In my own words, a person or a group of people creating something, whether be it a show, film, game, song or painting with the sole purpose of eliciting emotional reaction from another human being. With that obvious explanatory definition, it's pretty clear gaming as a medium would be in included within this definition. Modern day gaming has a cavalcade of games that have elicited emotional reactions from millions of people. Some games are even created with a sole vision in mind, with the purpose to say something, from the guise of a single creator just like a film. The only change is a different medium was chosen to explore the subject matter. There are many self-proclaimed video game authors like Hideo Kojima, Alec Holowak, Matt Torreson, Yoko Taro and Toby Fox. I'm personally not afraid to admit it, when the credits of Nier Automata played, a single very masculine tear rolled down my face. So if interactive media can elicit emotional reaction, why is it that some people still hold these misguided notions? Well to answer that, we have to go back, far back. Back before even when I was alive. We gotta go back to the 80s. The genesis of gaming began within the halls of arcades. When gaming as a medium was first devised, it was akin of that of a short interactive digital sport. The goal here within arcades were to entice the player with challenging but fair gameplay loops. More to do with the simple task of winning or losing. Nothing more, nothing less. No real goal to entice an emotional reaction from the player other than the pure adrenaline of winning. Much like chess is considered a sport, video games were and can be viewed the same way. This is stemming from its roots back in its creation and the reverberation can still be seen today. Obvious examples include mobile gaming and web gaming, simple tasks where winning and losing are the only choices, with the potential of adding money to speed up and make the experience easier. It goes without saying, something like Cookie Clickers and Candy Crush isn't really considered art. But if you think it is, that's okay. Another example of gaming not truly being respected and seen as an art form is the genre of competitive gaming. So let me give you an example. Here is me enthralled playing through Halo 3 campaign and here is me playing the multiplayer of Halo 3. It's quite hard to make a distinction between which is which. The keen eyed of you could probably work out which it is, but the average John Doe normie could not comprehend which is which. To them it would just look as if I'm using my controller to ruthlessly murder dudes in armor. So what I'm trying to articulate here is gaming as a medium is very broad, with genres within genres. But here's the three big distinctions I make to separate the three big types of genres to what is and isn't art. Let me just disclaim here, this isn't 100% definitive, there is a fair bit of overlap here. So first off we have what I don't really consider art, the arcadey, mobile and more accessible side of gaming, web browser games like T-Rex Run and Cookie Clickers. And then we have the online multiplayer and competitive scene. I'm not too sure if online and multiplayer and comp are considered an art form or sport or just an activity but some athletes are called artists so I'm just gonna say yes this is art. Now we have what I call the pretentious elevatory category. Games like The Last of Us, New Automata, The Arkham series, Celeste, Bioshock, God of War, Day Sex, Night in the Woods, Undertale and how could we not forget Raving Rabbids Go. So now we have a decent foundation of what art is in relation to gaming, but what does all the games I mentioned previously have that make it better than modern cinema and forms of literature? Well, it's to do with separation and cognitive consonants. I'll give you an example comparing and contrasting two similar pieces of art, The Last of Us and The Walking Dead. 
Sorry if you haven't seen any of them, but A, it's your own fault because they've been out for years. Spoilers in 3, 2, 1. During the climax of The Last of Us, Joel, our protagonist, is forced to make a selfish decision to save his surrogate daughter who us, the player, have been bonding for hours up until that point. You can still do the right thing here. There's a point during HBO's post-apocalyptic zombie TV show where a group of heroes are kidnapped and forced and lined up for execution by the season's antagonist, Negan. During this interrogation scene, the villain kills the best character in the show, Glenn. What I'm getting at here is there's a clear distinction between Ellie is going to die, I have to save her, and Glenn is going to die, Rick has to save him. There is a clear level of separation within the medium of cinema, while that doesn't exist within gaming. Not to say this is always capitalised upon within gaming, but in the cases where it is, it can lead to highly emotional and immersive experiences. Even in games that don't have a narrative choice to them, they still have the advantage over contemporary media due to the fact it's an active experience rather than a passive one. Going back to the post-apocalyptic zombie comparison here, in my opinion, Telltale's Walking Dead is superior to the show because of the narrative choices and participation. To amplify my point, just look at Netflix's Bandersnatch, Black Mirror's 2018 interactive film in the science fiction and anthology series Black Mirror. It was written by series creator Charlie Brooker and directed by David Slade. Netflix released a standalone film bridging the gap between game, film and interactive entertainment. Before I go into Bandersnatch, let me just preface this by saying I kind of hate Bandersnatch. The whole narrative revolves around the theme of choice but all the endings are basically the same. And yes, I know that's kind of the point but I thought it was really dumb and pretentious. The point I'm making here is more and more people are coming to the realisation of the superior mechanics that interactive media can offer. Video games, unlike books and cinema, give you the freedom to explore into the worlds in which you game in. Every world is beautiful and unique, and in some games, open world. Video games require user decision, giving them a chance to influence the story and even part of the design of the world in which you play out. By controlling the protagonist, we become an active participant in the story. Now I'm going to get into the analytical side of the argument. After doing some research, I've concluded that games interactivity leads to children becoming smarter. No, seriously. <laughs> There was a study conducted by researchers from the Queensland University of Technology who found that spending time playing video games rather than watching television improved cognitive skill within children. Dr. Daniel Johnson, PhD from Queensland University of Technology, one of the study authors said that television viewing is a passive activity while gaming is good for children. This research has shown that playing games can improve self-esteem, cognitive skills, and in some cases, physical activity. He added, and I quote, there's a lot of negative press around gaming and that's not well supported. Where there is negative effect, research shows that it's on a minority of people. Adding to that initial statement, he also said, video games are becoming a mainstream pastime. 92% of Australian homes have at least one device for playing video games. So if you're not gonna believe a pseudo intellectual like me, listen to this guy, he's a certified doctor with legitimate credentials, unlike me, who's a pixel man with no thumbs. <laughs> Excluding what I mentioned before, there are other case studies and surveys out there that show improvement in comparison to other contemporary media. Feel free to research to your heart's content. Speaking of such research, here is what else I could find on the topic. Green and Bavis Bavilia. Green and Bavilia 2012 found that an action video game improved performance on the ability to locate and quickly target stimulus in a field of distractors, a test that has been found to be a good predictor of driving ability. Reducive impulsiveness. Video games improved in the test of ability to refrain from responding to non-target stimulants in, in a situation in which most stimuli caused a response, but occasional stimulus called for no response. Overcoming dyslexia. Dyslexia in at least some cases seems to derive from problems of visual attention. One study showed that, that a minimum of 12 hours of video game play improved dyslexic children's scores on tasks of reading and phonology. In fact, the improvement was great and greater than achieved by many training programs that were explicitly designed to treat dyslexia. Anyway, up until this point, I feel like I've eloquently explained why narrative gaming is better than cinema and literature. But now let's get back to the graph and talk about the online multiplayer competitive side of games media. So I can argue that point as well. Another point that interactive media has over all other forms of entertainment is the social aspects. In many games you can play online or against your friend. There is nothing even similar to that in reading or watching. Reading is a solitary experience compared to gaming. While gaming you have the options of audio chats. Being in a party with your friends, 
Being in a party with your friends, you can play similar games with them at the same time. If you're playing a team-based game, you and your friend can all work together to achieve a goal or win a match that takes teamwork to get. In her paper, Gaming and Teamwork, Jada Lemitsky wrote, and I quote, Team communication skills and leadership skills were significantly related to the degree of involvement in the gaming community. In her paper, Jayard wrote that researchers found online gaming has a positive relation on teamwork and leadership skills. A multiplayer game has this effect over people because when they play a game with a team, you often need to take leadership positions or help out fellow teammates. In a single player game, people have always found it more fun to play alongside friends. Even single player games have the capacity of playing alongside friends. By taking turns or even watching or helping each other out throughout the experience, people manage to elevate the experience of a single player game by choosing to play alongside other people. In another study devised by Chin and Wang, <laughs> that's not funny, you can't, you can't joke about it. <laughs> In another study devised by Chin and Wang, they observed children who chose to play a computer game during their free time. Though only one child could play at a time, the children negotiated terms and gave each other advice to how to play the game. In the study, the researchers found that kids took a solo experience and made it into a more enjoyable experience alongside their friends to enjoy as well. To conclude, I believe video games are one of the most important mediums of art. Technology is constantly expanding and will continue to expand, and more and more artists will continue to choose, choose the medium of video games to paint and tell their stories. As a form of art that only exists within the digital space, video games are truly a combination of art and science. They include many forms of traditional artistic expression, cultures in forms of 3D modeling, illustrations for textures, narrative arcs, and dynamic music. All subsequent pieces of art work in tandem to transcend one type of experience. Video games are the only form of media that allows for personalization of artistic expression. In gaming, we find three distinct voices, the creator, the game, and the player. Those who play a game are following a story of an author and are bound by the constructs of the rules. And based on choices they make, the experience is completely personal to the person playing it. That's why I think video games are a natural evolution of what came before. Video games are a natural evolution of what we've always done. Play to discover our world. Discover each other and rarely sometimes discover ourselves. Right, welcome to the end of the video. Oh, also shout outs to this article I read by Roger Ebert, this dumbass guy, oh, who, oh my god, who pissed me off so much, that just fueled my anger when writing this. Uh, you may, you haven't even played a video game, so uh, it doesn't matter what you say, you potato shaped mayonnaise man, I bet you voted for Brexit. Ah! Uh, sorry, good vibes, I don't like being negative. Um, anyway, also, um, yeah, so, uh, that's me, um, if you made it here, congrats, like, fuck yeah, cause, Jesus, that, I mean, you know, it's a pretty long video, I mean, it's not that long, but whatever, uh, yeah, so, just, like, if you like it, please share it with everyone, and subscribe, and do all that stuff, and support me, cause I really enjoy doing this.